Hello everyone and welcome to the 2023 small room setup tour. Before we get stuck into the video I wanted to say a big thank you for the continued support over the past year with the channel now reaching over 75,000 subscribers. But with that said 96.9% of my viewers aren't subscribed so if you do enjoy this video please consider helping me towards the incredible 100,000 subscriber milestone. I also unfortunately have to say that my beautiful cat Pepsi sadly passed away in October 2022. I miss her a lot and I'm sure a lot of of you will as well. However, a couple of months ago, I decided to give this little kitty her forever home, and her name is Maya. And lastly, if you would like to support the channel further, you can become a member of the channel by pressing join under this video. You can also support me via Ko-fi, which is linked down below, or join the Scorpio Tech Discord server with nearly 4,000 members to chat about all things technology. So here we are, the 2023 small room setup tour. It's quite a bit later in the year than I'd have hoped, but I've got some really exciting changes to show you so sit back, relax and enjoy. We're going to kick things off like usual over at this side of the room and work our way around to the good stuff. Starting with the bedside table, the unit itself is the IKEA Godicious and as you can tell it's nothing too fancy but it's a clean and practical storage unit. On top of which we have one of my most expensive upgrades and that is the iPad Pro 11 inch 4th generation featuring the incredible Apple M2 chip. And of course I also had to pick up the 2nd generation Apple Pencil as well. I'm using an ESR magnetic case that I got from from Amazon which also doubles as a stand and as always I will be linking to all of these products down in the description so if there's anything that tickles your pickle make sure to check it out. Also on the bedside table I have a candle, this awesome Dongshin 3-in-1 wireless charging station which is housing my AirPod Pros that I honestly couldn't live without anymore, my brand new Apple Watch Series 8 which was an upgrade from the Series 3 and the iPhone 14 Pro Max which I'm currently using to record this video so I'm showcasing an 11 Pro Max here instead. Moving on we have the somewhat out dated third generation Echo Dot that I use to control pretty much all of the lights in my room, as well as the epic Govi Aura smart lamp. Once again I utilise Govi for the majority of the ambient lighting in my setup, but you'll see more of that as we move through the tour. And I honestly couldn't recommend the Govi Aura enough. It's reasonably priced, packed full of awesome features, and has a great app that gives you full control over the brightness, colours and scenes. Moving on up we have this really neat Game Boy wall art from a company called Grid. It's a device that was made in the year I was born and commands commemorates my personal journey growing up with games. They also do a bunch more of these with various consoles and controllers if you're interested. Next up we have my somewhat controversial idea of sticking a keyboard to the wall because why not? It's essentially just functioning like a giant fidget toy right now but I think it looks cool so whatever. Inside the drawers I keep some commonly used items such as keys, a ridge wallet, glasses, karambit, power bank, notepad, books and a few other bits and bobs as well. Moving over to the wall then I have two IKEA SCADIS pegboards placed vertically with various hooks, trays and containers. They come in a selection of sizes but these ones are the 36 by 56 centimeter boards and I love their simplicity and functionality. After getting these installed the area felt a bit dark so I opted for a LifeX beam running vertically next to the boards to give off some nice and highly customizable ambient lighting which is once again app or voice controlled. This cap was from an awesome experience at Silverstone Racing Circuit last year thanks to a great event put on by Asus. I got to drive a bunch of supercars around the track and test out the latest and greatest tech that they produce and it was truly a day and experience that I'll never forget. So at the bottom of the pegboards I have three small containers that I currently use for spare switches in case I change or build a new keyboard. Above that I have some of my personal favourite keyboards in my collection. Starting at the bottom I have the Varmelo Yakimo, then the Drop Enter and then the recently reviewed Aula F68 at the top. Sat above that is the 2020 MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Although I don't use it that often anymore it has been a must have for travelling and portability. So Saying that though, since I got hold of the M2 iPad Pro, I hardly use it so I may consider selling it in the near future. On the shelf above I have the Nikon D3200 camera that I use when travelling and for most of my Instagram product posts and YouTube thumbnails. As always I've changed around the posters and this year I've gone for some Japanese themed ones and I really love how they look on the wall. I got these from a shop in the UK called HMV for under £4 each which in my opinion is an absolute bargain. I think frame posters are a great option as they can easily and cheaply be changed and it gives your room a complete completely fresh feel. And the winner for the most pointless purchase of the year goes to the giant Squishmallow Pikachu. Although it is very punchable and Maya loves sleeping on it so I guess it's fine. 
Right guys? And last but not least for this area is the new cushions I got from B&M. They're cheap, comfy, and well, that's all you need really. I had a few questions last year about the bed, and this is the Bergamo USB bed frame that I got from Benson's for beds. It's nothing too special, but it does look pretty great in my opinion. And of course, for the main room light, I'm using the Govi smart bulb, all of which will be linked down below. And onto some more lights, yep, you guessed it, it's Govi again. Around the room, under the bed, and on the shelving units, I've used two sets of 10 meter Govi RGBIC strips, which I control via the Apple voice controls to change between a plethora of colours and scenes. Although Govi have become a little more expensive over the years, I think they have the ideal middle ground between good quality and an attractive price point, making them a great choice for gaming setups. If you've been watching the past few setup tours, then you know what's coming next. It's of course the classic Scorpio Tech Sherpa blanket that I truly believe is an essential part of any functioning setup. Although it is summer right now and I absolutely want this thing nowhere near me, but it is super soft and ideal for winter. And with that said, let's move move on to the TV and console area that's seen a big overhaul in the lighting and immersion department. So the shelving unit under the TV is a locker 9 cube unit from B&M here in the UK and it's honestly ideal, especially considering the space constraints I have, it allows me to showcase the Xbox Series X, Switch and PS5 in a nice way. I did have to do a bit of DIY to make the shelf for the Series X though, but other than that the cubes are ideal for having easy access to the games and controllers. Now this might surprise you, but these lights are one of my favourite upgrades this year. In previous years I've used battery powered lights so it either meant buying new batteries or constantly recharging them so instead I found these USB rechargeable lights on Amazon and they are brilliant. I would highly recommend getting some of these lights for either shelves or a unit like this. To get the power and HDMI cables to the switch I made a small hole at the base of the centre cube so that the cables remain hidden but I can also quickly swap between the handheld and docked modes. Another rapid fire recommendation if you need a switch case just get this one. It's the TomTok carry case from Amazon and it's cheap, strong has game storage and well, I don't know what else but just buy it. And a quick note since everyone complains, the PS5 has more room than it looks so please stop telling me it's going to choke to death. It's fine. I don't really know if it's fine, I just don't use it anymore. <clears throat> anyway, uh, where was I? Ah yes, the lighting. So I've introduced quite a lot of Philips Hue products this year to my setup, including the sync box, play bars, and the gradient reactive strip on the TV itself. These have completely leveled up the immersion experience, with the strip lighting up the top and sides of the screen, and the play bars lighting up underneath. In the centre I'm still using the same old PlayStation icons lights, but I really like the glow they give off without cluttering up the space. And of course, on top of the unit I have some IKEA artificial trees, a Master Chief Funko Pop for Xbox, and an Aloy Funko Pop for PlayStation. Another new addition for 2023 is these awesome Govi Hex panels. What I love about these is that they not only look great when in use, but also don't look hideous when turned off. In many ways they are similar to the Nanoleaf light panels that I already have, and act as a wall feature as well as having excellent lighting functionality. One cool thing about these though is that the light can emit from underneath the panels, which gives it a sort of underglow and lights up the surrounding wall very nicely. I briefly mentioned the Philips Hue upgrades earlier, but now let's take a closer look at the huge lighting and immersion overhaul that I've had. So this setup consists of the Hue Bridge, Sync Box, two play bars and a 55 inch gradient light strip, and don't get me wrong it is very expensive but the results are just fantastic. Movies and games are really taken to the next level with this lighting immersion which can all be customised through the app to change the intensity, brightness and change between dedicated movie, game and music modes. The main downside though is that the Sync Box doesn't currently support 4K at 120Hz which is unfortunate considering both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X both run at those specs. But overall, I'm really loving the Hue products, the lighting is incredibly accurate and it really does add a lot to the entertainment experience. Talking of, this is the stunning LG C1 OLED 55 inch TV, and over a year on I could not be happier with its quality and performance. It's perfect for games and movies with its 4K resolution and 120Hz refresh rate which means I can get the most out of the latest consoles. And of course being an OLED panel means it has true blacks which make for an awesome viewing experience. Even in 2020, I would highly recommend the LG C1 OLED or the C2 if you wanted to get the updated model if you're in the market for a new TV. As for the audio, I have the TV paired with the Samsung HWK450 soundbar with the subwoofer underneath the bed. It's honestly starting to feel like my own personal cinema at this point and I'm all for it especially considering the lack of space I have available. So with the trio of TV, audio and lighting combining to make the best entertainment experience I've ever had, let's just see some quick samples of it all in action. Field will swing back to the Galaxy One and then at you. 
I'll let you make your own minds up, but I absolutely love how well everything works together. My question to you though is, what would be the first movie you watch or game you play if you were using this setup? Moving on, and this might seem a bit overkill, but I'm also running another Govi RGBIC strip around the TV unit, TV itself, across the shelves and around the wall to give me a second lighting option when I'm not using the Hue sink or TV lights. I feel like this gives the room a really fresh and consistent feel aesthetically, and it also gives me a fantastic way to display some of my favourite controllers and keyboards on the shelves. This is another area I've changed around a bit this year and those of you that have watched the previous tours will have already noticed that the Funko Pops have gone. In its place though we have some of my favourite controllers including the Stadia controller, Rip Stadia, a Hex Gaming Custom Xbox controller, my Scorpio Tech Design Labs controller, the White Elite Series 2 controller and a custom PS5 Hex Gaming controller which I absolutely adore. All of these are sat on the Skull & Co Phantom controller stands that I picked up from Amazon. These are available for various controllers and I highly recommend them if you wish to display your own controllers or simply have a place for them to sit. Overall I really love how this looks and it feels a lot more mature than the Funko Pops did. On the bottom shelf I have the classic IKEA Fika hanging plant, the Echo 3087, a custom keyboard build that I used in the previous setup tour, and the RK61 with a collection of custom keycaps that I've collected over the past few years. And before I forget to mention, these are the IKEA Moslander shelves which are 1.5 meters long and they are installed upside down to allow for better displaying of the keyboards and controllers. I mentioned earlier that I also have a Govi RGBIC strip running around the shelves and these are ideal as the lip of the shelves can hide the strip from direct view meaning that you only see the nice glow. Moving onwards now to the desk we have the Davoon Pixu Max art display which is sat on top of the PC as well as the Epic Scuff Instinct Pro controller which is genuinely one of the nicest controllers that I've ever used. The Davoon Pixu Max art display allows you to create your own designs or search the gallery for thousands of user created artworks. I think it's an awesome device as you have the freedom to change it whenever you wish or simply use it as a clock or one of its many other functionalities. My question to you though is what is your favourite Pokemon? We've got quite a few changes to look at in this area but let's kick things off with yep you guessed it even more Govi lights. This time we've got the Govi Glide and I installed these here to give a sort of outline to the desk area as well as the light up the top of the PC. The Glide is highly customizable with various scenes, effects and options to choose from to really make it fit your theme. Some of the new additions here are the mic and the microphone arm. The microphone arm is the PSA1 Plus arm from Rode and whilst it is quite pricey I genuinely think it was worth it, especially considering this time last year I had a flimsy and squeaky metal arm that cost about £12. This arm is sleek, stable, silent and the perfect accompaniment for my new microphone, the Rode NT-USB Plus. If either of these interest you I recently made a video about them both so be sure to check it out. But to summarise, I think they're great and this is the microphone I'm using to record this video. And here's where things start to get very, very exciting. We'll take a look at the beast on the desk very, very shortly, but let's quickly run through my peripherals. My current keyboard is the Vissels V84, which is ideal for both gaming and video editing, especially when combined with my favourite Lugia custom keycap and this gorgeous custom made blue wrist rest. And as I mentioned before, I will leave all of the links to everything mentioned down in the description. As for the mouse, this is the Razer Bass. Basilisk V3 Pro in white and I can't get enough of it. I've paired this with the Carpio 2.0 white wrist rest glide from Delta Hub which really helps with wrist fatigue after long sessions. All of which is sat on top of this beautiful poly desk pad from Highstar. One of my favourite additions this year is the Elgato white stream deck. I do a lot of multitasking so having easily available and fully customisable macros has been fantastic. It's definitely a device I would struggle to manage without now. I've also drilled a hole in the desk to allow cables to come through if necessary to keep the desk looking as clean as possible. And of course I have my somewhat iconic shape of nanoleaf panels above the monitor which have been a staple part of my setup for many years. And so it is time. You will have already noticed one big, actually massive change on the desk and that is the stunning LG Ultra Gear 45 inch curved 240 hertz OLED gaming monitor. And this thing is the definition of a beast. This insane looking monitor has an 800R curve and runs at a resolution of 3440 by 1440p. It is by far the most immersive gaming experience I've ever had and this was actually the first time I've used a curved monitor and I absolutely get the hype now. The Ultra Gear monitor is packed full of incredible features such as its built-in lighting zones, various picture-in-picture -picture modes, battery smooth 240 hertz refresh fresh rate, peak brightness of 1000 nits, OLED display, response time of 0.03 milliseconds, 
HDR10, its near borderless display as well as being G-Sync and FreeSync compatible. The list honestly just goes on and on with many of the features being tailored towards giving you the absolute best possible gaming experience. Not to mention this is the first 240Hz OLED gaming monitor on the market which is really paving the way for future immersive gaming experiences. Thanks to the various connection options and the picture in picture modes available you can use this single monitor the same way that you would use dual monitors which is incredibly useful especially for the way I like to use my PC. All of this can easily be changed in seconds thanks to the included remote control which really takes your multitasking to another level, even if that does mean playing two games at the same time or something ridiculous. And that's just some of the features. In person this monitor looks absolutely sensational. Thanks to OLED, MLA and Meta technology this monitor produces some incredible visuals without hindering the performance. All of this together means a vibrant, bright and clear image with its 1.5 million to 1 contrast ratio and a 98.5 5% colour gamut. And if things couldn't get any more immersive, I've also gone Philips Hue crazy and installed two more play bars and a PC light strip onto the back of the 45 inch beast. Philips Hue now has an app for PC, so in this case there was no need for an extra sync box and there was also no frame rate restrictions. With the play bars facing down and the light strip lighting up the wall, I was ready to experience truly immersive gaming. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been so used to apps being awful these days that I was pleasantly surprised with how good the Philips Hue app was. You can easily change between sync modes, brightness levels and scenes at the click of a button. Combining the epic monitor with the hue lighting makes for some absolutely awesome gaming experiences. Red Dead 2, Forza, Crab Game, you name it, literally everything feels more enjoyable with this massively immersive combination. I thought I was really gonna miss having two monitors and whilst that may be the case in some aspects, the benefits of having the 45 inch ultra gear curved OLED make me look past the original doubts that I had. It just feels like every aspect of this monitor was designed designed to give you the best possible gaming experience. It's also my first 240Hz monitor and I'm really scared that I won't handle dropping back down to 165Hz if I ever go back to my dual monitor setup. The monitor can also be wall mounted but for now I've left it on its original stand as it offers height and tilting options on every axis. The monitor also has cable management options on the back which allow me to keep the desk clean without any visible cables. As great as the monitor is for gaming, it's just as good for video editing thanks to the screen's real estate. State. I feel like I have a lot more space to work with than I did on the previous 27 inch monitor. And as you can tell my gaming addiction hasn't got much better since I now own well over 2000 games. So overall as you can tell I'm extremely happy with the new monitor especially when paired with the Philips Hue lighting to make for an incredibly immersive PC gaming experience. Now moving on over to the PC there hasn't been much of a change here at all apart from the fact that my Corsair fan lights aren't working properly anymore so I'll have to consider changing those in the near future. But apart from that, it's still running fantastically well and handles everything that I throw at it. For those of you that don't know, I'm running an i9-9900K overclock 25GHz, an Asus ROG RTX 3080, 32GB of DDR4 Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM, all of which is housed in the Corsair Crystal 570X case. If you want to have a look at the full spec list, I have it in my Discord server, so make sure you drop in and say hi. Now, I was very tempted to change the PC this year just for the setup tour, but considering it's performing so well and I still like the look of it, I thought I'd make the financially sensible decision of sticking with it for now. And you thought I was done with Govi, did you? Well, you're very wrong. This is one of the Govi neon rope lights, and I decided to replace my 5-year-old RGB strip on the desk with it and I'm very glad I did. It's a fully customizable pre-diffused light strip that has some excellent features. It has a fantastic brightness level, high quality design, great app control and can also be cut to size. As for the desk this is the IKEA Linmon which is unfortunately discontinued now but it is a 150 by 75 centimeter desk and the drawers of course are both the IKEA Alex drawers because I'm basic like that. In the top drawer I keep some handy tech such as mice and phones including the G Pro X Superlight and the Redmi Note 12. Plus. In the second drawer I have a selection of handheld consoles and games such as the classic DS, 3DS as well as the very underrated PS Vita. I also have the RGB spotlight remote in here as well as this incredibly handy Haley Cool rechargeable battery pack for Xbox controllers which is a game changer. On the opposite side I have my utility drawer which has the BenQ Halo screen bar remote which automatically activates when I open the drawer. The Halo screen bar is an essential part in my setup ever since I first used it. It lights up the entire desk and is a great light source for my unboxing videos as 
well as when generally working at the desk. The remote allows you to easily change between the brightness levels and the warmth of the light, as well as a couple of other options, and this is definitely a product that I would highly recommend. Inside the drawer, I've got your typical content, such as pens, an electric screwdriver, notepads, cable ties, karambits, and just that sort of thing, really. In the other drawers, I have a bunch of cables, controllers, and paperwork, as well as a bunch of cable management and cleaning products that I use often to keep things neat and tidy. As for headphones, I'm still rocking the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pros, although I recently did replace the headband and ear pads. I absolutely adore these headphones, but I am going to be testing out the Razer Black Shark V2 Pros in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. As you can see, I've put a lot of effort into the cable management to keep the underside of the desk as cable-free as possible. I work on the out-of-sight, out-of-mind theory, so as long as I can't see them, they don't exist. To hide the cables the best I can, I've used some D-line cable trunking, which is drilled into the underside of the desk, as well as a lot of cable ties and planning. The chair I'm using is the Autonomous Ergo Chair Pro, which is ideal for me with its massive ergonomic options and stylish design that I think fits my room very nicely. The real reason is that Maya loves it and she gets more use out of it than I do. But yeah, it's a really great chair and I could definitely recommend it if you're in the market for an ergonomic office style chair. And with that said, we're now nearing the end of the 2023 small room setup tour, but I will answer a few questions that I had from last year's video. The first of which was about the size of the room, so this is a box room which measures about 2.3 by 2.3 meters. This is very restrictive and makes it very hard to work with, but with some sacrifices I'm very happy with the outcome. The next question was about the wall colour, so the paint I used was called Cloud, and it's essentially a mid to light grey colour which reflects the lighting very very nicely. And there we are, the end of the 2023 small room setup tour. Thank you so much for being patient with me this year, this video has taken an unbelievable amount of planning, putting together, recording, editing and scripting, so I would really appreciate if you got this far in the video, if you could leave a like, comment and even consider subscribing for more videos. I would also love for you to join the Scorpio Tech Community Discord server, it's definitely the easiest way to get in touch with me if you have any questions. If you'd like to take it to the next level and support me further, please consider becoming a Scorpio Tech YouTube channel member or leaving me a tip on Ko-fi which is linked down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video, I really really hope it was worth the wait. Thank you again and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.